reported, and now let's try this again. So, yesterday we were um, looking at statements about error and absolute value, and we were getting things like this. I mean, this is just uh, something I came up with today, like a minute ago, but we were saying that the absolute value of x minus some number is less than another number. And now we want to be able to solve an inequality that looks like this. And I don't know what it is. Um, this is a topic that always trouble with students, and in, or some students, I should say. And in particular, I mean, the error that I see again and again, and this is an error, please don't write it down because I don't want it in your notes. And then you see it and think I'm telling you to do this. But that, I mean, students want to do this. And you cannot add numbers out of absolute values in this way. And that's just, that's just C. The absolute value of x minus 75 is less than 5. Zoom out. So this these are the x values where this is true, starting at um, 70, ending at 80. If you just add the x values out, you see you don't get the same region. I mean, there is some similarity. This uh, 80 is still providing the right-hand boundary, but this region you're getting is much bigger than the region we actually want. And, you know, if you... don't have the absolute value, again, kind of the same issue. This is the region we want. This is the region we get if we just say that we're going to add 75 to both sides. So just looking at the graphs, that cannot be correct. Let's try to figure out what it should be, and let's use the number line, always a helpful tool. Here's 75, and the statement that x minus 75 is less than 5 is a statement about distance. We touched on this yesterday. It's saying that the distance between x and 75 has to be um, less than 5. So we can go 5 units up, as high up as 80. We could go five units down as low as 70. And these are the x values that satisfy that inequality. Can, so how can we get that without drawing the number line? Well, you see this region is bigger than something and less than something. 
to be in that interval, x has to be bigger than 70, x has to be less than 80. So we're looking for some kind of what's called a compound inequality. A compound inequality is an inequality like this, where something is smushed between a bigger thing and a smaller thing. And the particular compound inequality we're looking for, let me just do this with letters, but then I'll give an example quickly. The statement that an absolute value is less than something is the same as the statement that the thing inside the absolute value is stuck between the negative number and the positive number. And that's because, you know, working with abstract letters like M and K is always kind of a hassle and kind of confusing. Let's go back and let's look once again at this concrete example. The statement that X minus 75 is less than 5 is the same as the statement that x minus 75 is stuck between a negative 5 and positive 5. So that's how we, this is how, or this is the first step of how we solve an absolute value inequality. We rewrite it as a compound inequality. And then we can deal with the compound inequality using material from last week, it must have been. So, what if we covered that up and just looked at x minus 75 is less than 5? How would we solve this? You add 75 to the other side of the equation. That's exactly correct. Thank you. You'd add 75 to both sides of the inequality. And if you covered this up, same thing. To solve this, you'd add 75 to both sides of the equality. So to solve these both at once, as it were, we'll add 75. It no longer really makes sense to talk about sides. We'll add 75 to both to all three pieces of the inequality. Negative 5 and 75 are 70. Positive 5 and 75 are 80. And you wind up with the statement that x is between 70 and 80. And I am fine with this as a way of writing answers. I've kind of moved away from interval notation. And the statement that x is between 70 and 80 is the same statement that we got here when we looked at the number line and counted five units in either direction. So that's the basics of solving these inequalities. Um, we'll look at a few variations, maybe a slightly more complicated example, but does anybody have any questions just on this, on the frames we've done so far? So, 
in most cases, you're going to be looking at inequalities that look something like this, because this is what statements about error tend to look like. And statements about error are the application we've settled on in this class. But, I mean, if there's a slight variation, Maybe instead of subtraction, you have addition. That can sometimes happen when you're working with negative numbers. Well, it's not fundamentally changing the process. We've still got... That's why when I introduced this, I wanted to just put m is less than k instead of the absolute value of x minus a number is less than k because the process isn't changing. We first rewrite this as a compound inequality. That thing inside the absolute value is stuck between negative 9 and 9. And then we want to get x by itself. And here, instead of adding, if we want to get rid of that plus 4, we should be subtracting. And we, 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 are, we always have to be a little careful. I mean, plenty of times I see this um, in the classwork that a student will write everything correct and then say negative 9 minus 4 is negative 5 or something. So just take a second to um, check your work. Negative 9 minus 4 is negative 13. Nine, positive 9 minus 4 is 5. This all looks good. And, I mean, we could complicate things slightly, but, I mean, there are, there are pretty sharp limits to how complicated we can go. Because, I mean, when, when we didn't have absolute values, when we were just looking at inequalities, we looked at linear stuff. And that was as complicated as we ever got. So, about the most complicated example... we could have with absolute values would be something like this. And again, the key is not to panic, to look at what's come before and to use the same method that's worked previously. to set up the compound inequality. So, sometimes I do see trouble at this stage. Um, students will recognize, in general, that we need to get rid of that 8 and that we need to get rid of that 4. But there's an order that this has to be done in. And just to say this explicitly, when you're manipulating equations, you're undoing the order of operations, which 
is a very sort of fancy sounding phrase. But what I mean is, do look here. First multiplication, second subtraction. That's PEMDAS, multiplication before subtraction. When we want to get x by itself, we go the other way. So we un get rid of the subtraction first. Subtraction we undo via addition. And now we just want to be careful not to do any silly little algebraic mistakes. Negative 12 plus 8 is the same as 8 minus 12, negative 4. 12 plus 8 is 20, and you can tell when a problem was grown in a lab to be used in the classroom because their numbers work out nice. Now we want x by itself. We can divide both all of these parts, these pieces, by 4. And everything works out cleanly. Um, a brief statement of warning. It didn't come up here, but if you divide by a negative number, you have to flip inequalities. That's true with these uh, Compound inequalities, just like it's true with any other inequality. So if I wanted to have like the absolute value of negative 4x, less than 12, Suddenly I'm feeling unconfident, but I'm going to power through. Uh, if you want to divide by negative 4, these inequalities are going to switch. So negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. That becomes a greater than this thus then also becomes a greater than. So we still have x's trapped between two numbers. Instead of here, where we'd say negative 1 is less than x is less than 5, here we're saying 3 is greater than x is greater than negative 3. So I don't think this is coming up in any of the worksheet problems, but just as a reminder, we do have to be careful when we're multiplying or dividing negative numbers, and we have inequality. Any questions about this material? We kind of went through it, but as I say, just because it's something I often see students struggle with, I, I'd rather go slow through a section.